Hello. Today we are not in the Wild West, the Mild West, the North West, the West Indies, the West Windies, warm westerly winds and wet winters, wet and wild, the Wicked Witch of the West, the West Wing, the Worst Witch, the Wind in the Willows, or the Wind Beneath Your Wings. For once we turn an ear to a city on the east of the island that is not the West, and hear what life has in store for those who did not sally forth to the infinite plain of stubble, of horses, and of rugged independence, of cow-shaped children, and of child-sized cows. Staying home is supposed to be safe, safe as houses, but I think we all know that even alone, especially alone, in our home evil things can haunt us. The clenching hand of anxiety, a creaking floorboard, an unanswered letter, a forgotten promise, a duty. Open the cupboard and gasp. Was I meant to have been feeding this kitten? You know you were. You know you were. Hello, and welcome to this latest happy nightmare. Welcome. To cow children. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children. Cow girls, cow boys, any non binary. Cow gals, cow pals, hoping no brigands will kill them. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. All cow children, every afflicted pilgrim. Countless millions, any demography. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children, cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. Shh, shh. I thought I heard something. A bump in the night, a bonk. Downstairs, listen. Bad habit, I don't like going downstairs after midnight. Or after sundown, or at all. I don't know if someone is down there, or... Like always, it's just, just physics. Or a mouse. Or an auditory hallucination. I don't know if I believe in hallucinations. They always seem bogus, as a concept. And one time... I know I've told you this before, but one time I thought... I was convinced in an old house that I heard someone downstairs. Muffled sounds, paper peeling. And I stood at the top of the steps in the dark holding my breath and listening. Listening, listening. And the silent sound seemed to drown it. But I listened. And I was right. There was someone, an intruder. Lost and out of his mind on something, but he was downstairs, leaning against the wall, scraping along it. Perhaps he thought that was his home. Well, it wasn't. I ordered him out. I don't have a lot of big courage, but I ordered him. Get out! And he did. He went. And I was vindicated. My paranoia was vindicated. Because I believed the unlikely, that there was an intruder afoot. And there actually was. Do you have any idea what that does to every subsequent paranoid thought? But, but this isn't paranoia. This is reasonable fear. It could be a creature down there. It could be the murderer. Be still my vibrating heart. I can be calm and try, try to not imagine the worst. Do you believe in ghosts, bad habit? Well, I don't. I don't. There are who knows what evils out stalking the streets. Armed, costumed, animal militias. The murderer, even. But not ghosts. Some people hear a bonk in the night, and they fear a ghost. I would embrace a ghost. Ghosts never gave me any trouble. But a human man, woman, or person could hurt me. They could hurt the unmentionables, our upstairs friends. Shh. They could undo everything. 
Listen with me, please, Ben Hebbett, listen. I really don't know how I'm going to sell all these oil paintings in a street fight or war like this. I don't think we need to worry this time. But I'm not going downstairs to check. I know, I know. I know how well I locked, barricaded every door, every window, bolted. I'm not going to start going down and checking and checking and checking things that I already know. It's nightmarish. Oh, what the heck? Hello there. Do you want to buy some stilts? What are you doing knocking on my window? I thought you were the murderer. I saw you had a light on and... Yes, uh... but this is upstairs. People aren't meant to... Are you a peeping Tom? I could be, but I'm not. I'm selling stilts. Stilts? Walk around up here and you're safe from the killers, the maulers, the savages after blood. They only see the wood, you see. You could get out of the house. It isn't a house. It's a dormitory. But everyone else was called away to fight. And you got left behind, eh? Perhaps you'd like to buy some stilts. What's their tension like? Eh? Eh? You know how much bounce. What's their stats? They're about this tall. Oh, so they are just wooden poles? I thought maybe you'd have some amount of oof, you know? Boing! Bounce! So you have a spring in your step. Huh, no. That'd need a complete redesign. That's genius! Did you just did you just think that up? That? Or I dreamt it. That's a hundred pound idea. Oh. Can I buy it off you? For a hundred pounds? Alas, I'm a poor stilt vendor. I don't even have a hundred stilts. Uh, what food do you got on you? No sausage, no diggity. Got any puppets? Now you're talking my language. Here, package and parcel. Sign here, please. He's yours. This is a happy chance. Who's in there? A little donkey hand puppet. Oh, my favourite. Little Jeremy, he is. Truth be told, I stole him from my brother. To upset him? Nah, my brother's a brigand. And he treated LJ something awful. Torment, torture, a real messed up bunch. I rescued him. <sighs> Thank you. I will treasure him. I, I should be off. Wait, does little Jeremy have a voice? I'd say that's up to you. Uh, no, no. Some puppets do, some don't. Like, some make you say the most monstrous things. But some only whisper sweetly in your ear. They're only puppets. Nothing supernatural. I know that. But they give you a detach from the character. Tricks the mind into saying what it thinks. Not a bad way to speak, some say. You know, I... P.S. Yeah? Do you want to buy an oil painting? No. Well, tell people I've got some to shift. Oh. Oh? Have you seen Cabbage Bags doing her rounds? She's the only one who can throw... Fresh fish in these high windows. And I need my fillet. Sorry, mate. Cabbage bags is dead. Well then, let's say hello howdy, little Jeremy. You are a crusty one. I think you'll take a little TLC to bring back your fluff. What's that, little Jeremy? You're not a fluffy dog. Well, that's all right. I'll still see if I can comb out some of this grit. You haven't been well looked after, have you? What's that? Kept you in the freezer. Dear, dear me. Don't worry, you're safe here. It's my job to keep this place safe. I'm all that stands between the deathly streets and... Well, there's a secret I'm guarding. And I'm not quite ready to tell you about that. Of course I trust you, little donkey. But I have sworn an oath. Come with me. Look down there, LJ. For many months now, this city has been engulfed in layers of fog, smoke, smog, smog, folk, and smog. And on good days, mist. It's been like this every day since October. That's right, it's not very nice out there. In the before times, believe it or believe it not, on a clear day, I could see boats on the distant sea. Have you ever seen the sea, little Jeremy? It's full of fish. Well, I say full. Most of it by volume is water. Full of fish would be monstrous. Unmanageable. 
Those are gunshots, little donkey. Don't worry. Still a few streets away. There's been war on the streets for a very long time. A gang war or an army war. The foxes guns go. <coughs> and the wolves have guns that go. Ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. And sometimes you hear a pew. And that's called a ricochet. And that's probably one of those gangs. They are people, really. But there's a creature out there that devours anyone even remotely human. The costumes allow them to pass safely. Or as safe as you can in a war zone. But I'm telling you terrible things, little Jeremy. I ought to be setting you up a little bed with little pillows. Or introducing you to some little friends. Not people friends, I'm afraid. More little fussy puppet friends. There are no other human people in this dormitory. Little Jeremy, I lied to you. Please sit here and you'll see. The secret people. The upstairs people. You must on no account. On no account. Tell anyone they are hiding here. They are chased and persecuted people, and nowhere is safe, even in the before times. Which one will it be? I'm guessing Sandy May. I just need to move a few bits, because behind this bookcase... Knock, knock! Oh, it's Dirk. Who are you talking to? To a puppet. He's called little Jeremy, and he's new. You ever worry you're going mad down here? N no, I worry I'm going bored. And sometimes that I'm going miserable. But I have this puppetry situation under control. They are pretend. They are my hand in clothes. All right, just making conversation. Well, it's about all I get. But if you ever end up long-term solo, you'll talk to yourself or to puppets or you'll pray. Popping down for three things. One, got any fish? Sorry, Dirk. Cabbage Bex is dead. What was it? Hounded by vampires or vice versa? Maybe she was wolfed down by Frankensteins. What's a stein? It's like a stone, but you hit someone on the head with it until they die. Neatly palm-sized. Oh, when anyone says palm-sized, I imagine a coconut. Well, you're imagining too hairy. How many hits does it usually take to go full dead? I don't know. I'm not the murderer. But I reckon it depends on strength. And purity of heart, like playing the violin. How so? There's no physics to violence. The strings aren't paying any attention to the bow. The music that comes out is from clear mind and pure heart. Oh yeah, everyone knows that. Oh, the other thing, we've got another painting. Another one? Well, another four or five, but oil paint takes time to dry. This one's ready for the market. I keep telling you there isn't a market. And I keep telling you it's good art. Better every time, I reckon. Just find someone who likes oil paintings. I bet we're the only ones selling. Tell someone where? I never leave the dormitory. I scarcely leave this floor. Well, that's not really our problem. Lean out of the window or something. They're good paintings. What's it a painting of? The rustling. That's what the last one was. And nobody's even heard of the rustling. That happened way out west. Most people in Portoid never been west of Kitty Country. Well, it's exotic then. The pictures tell a story. They're a series. Look, we can go over this again and again if you want to, but... Oh, I reckon Sopwith's calling me upstairs. Yep, go to them. Have a good one. Sorry about cabbage bags, though. Those were good fish. Well, that was Dirk, little Jeremy. He's one of the secret people. They live in secret up there. And they party down. And they have what I always assume is one long sexy party. And produce a lot of oil paintings, poetry, woodcut prints, decorated stones, calligraphic manuscripts, scented candles, and art. They expect me to... No, I'm being unreasonable. I'm losing my rag. It happens, it happens. This year has been a long night. The deal is, LJ, I buy food and art supplies and I get them to the secret people. 
The Secret Friends, Dirk and Sopwith and Sandy May. And they make these beautiful, I mean, look at them, these beautiful paintings of I don't understand what. And I'm meant to sell them and use the money and so on. <laughs> What's that, little Jeremy? I'm right to be annoyed. No, no, I have to contradict you. They fled from persecution and personal catastrophe. I hide them because it's the right thing to do. And because when my unit rolled out, I was the one left behind to protect them. The lonely wealth. Look at these, LJ, look at these. These were the first two puppets I owned. Good habit and bad habit. Cause look, they are like rabbits. These were given to me by the parent of a friend, because, apparently, I could use them to externalize my feelings. I was meant to control my anger. I do control it. You have nothing to fear from me. My anger is only inwards, and it's a small thing. Good habit, meet little Jeremy. Good habit likes prizes and rewards and healthy vegetables. What do you like, LJ? Soothing jazz? Strings of sausages? Fresh apples? See, you have that in common. And this is bad habit. Don't be thrown by the names, LJ. Bad habit isn't bad, only sad. That's right, little Jeremy. Bad habit's name ties him to depravity. And it's always what's expected of him. But he tries, little Jeremy. He tries to escape the stereotype everyone sees. Bad habit has a good heart, LJ. So does good habit, of course. They are brothers. But good habit has it easy. He gets the praise, the prayer, the blonde fur. He's got it made. He can't help it, but he's proud. Back already, Dirk. It's me, actually. Little Jeremy. It's Sandy May. Is that the new puppet? Oh, sweet, another rabbit. He's a little donkey. Oh, all right. But you know, the long ears, both like carrots. And strings of sausages, apparently. Sorry to hear about underarm cabbage bags. She could throw a fresh fish with perfect precision. Never once landed on the roof from cabbage bags. Dirk told you about the painting, right? Could you give me a hand with it? Let's take a look. Gore, it's huge. Oof. How am I supposed to sell this? How am I supposed to get it out the window? The frame's detachable, collapsible. And then you just roll it up. Wait, all our paintings are still here. You haven't been selling them at all. Nobody comes. Nobody comes to an abandoned dormitory to buy art. You have to be more proactive. Could you make something the common people on the street might want to buy? Because I never meet anybody who looks like they own a gallery. Oh, is this going to be a class thing? I didn't mean it like that. Bet you didn't. Look, I really appreciate you watching out for us like this, and we wouldn't be able to survive if you weren't here, constantly guarding the door, dealing in this art and bringing us fishes and things. No more fishes, mate. But you've got to up your sales tactics, because there's scarcely any money left. Sinbad. Yeah. Thank you. So much. But please try a little harder. Oh, that's up with calling. I'm off up the stair. Goodbye, little Jenny. Little Jeremy. Little Jeremy, you're right. It's an ugly sort of envy on my part. I really beat myself up about this, because they are wanted. They are on the run. They are in specific danger. I'm free. I'm at liberty, and in most, I'm in general danger. They are the victims. I know I'm trying to do the good thing, the right thing down here. But part of me thinks they should be at least as lonely as I am. At least. <sighs> this was meant to be my year after everything. After transition, after peace and war. And for surely sure, little Jay, it sorrows me that I've no one to look handsome for. Because I can. And I could. Did you hear that? Little Jeremy, I thought I heard a bonk in the night. 
I thought I heard that earlier, but I distracted myself. It could be someone on the stairs. Don't breathe. It's probably just our imaginations. Listen. The proverbial pin drop. Who are you? I've been downstairs trying to set this whole house alight. It's a dormitory. Because I know you keep a lot of puppets here. And I wanted to see the whole nest go up in flames. But I can't get anything to light down there. It's completely inflammable because of the damp and the mould. Because of the what? So I've come up here to finish the job. You must really hate puppets. It's complicated. I love them. But then I crush them. Gives me sorrow and a thrill. And you know, puppets ain't real. Just cloth and stories. So doing this is better than legitimate murder. It's horrible. You're a tormentor of puppets. You're not Big Jeremy, are you? Brother to the stilt vendor? Big Jeremy? You've got to be joking. I'm just... I'm just Jeremy. Regular size. Regular Jeremy. That's me. But that means... Do, do you know little Jeremy? Is little Jeremy here? Jeremy! Little Jeremy! I won't let you take him. But he's only cloth. And he's mine. He's mine! You're... Technically right. I'm going to tear him apart and I'm going to tear you apart and raise this apartment to the ground. It's a monastic dormitory. Um, have you ever heard of a Frankenstein? What's a Stein? Think fast. Ah! Little Jeremy, he did not think fast. I, I think he's dead. The Stein has brought regular Jeremy low. Oh, oh no, no, no. No, we have a body. A dead one. Don't you see? I had to. I had to kill him. Or he would have found out about the upstairs people. I only have one mission in life. And it's their protection from discovery. Oh, I thought I heard voices. What have you done? <laughs> Weird question. <laughs> but how do you feel about consuming human flesh? No. Okay, then we have a problem, because there's a dead man here, and I don't know what to do with the body. I knew I sensed the presence of death. Reckon you should burn it, stick it in a cupboard, sell it. I can't stay here, and I can't get it away from here without going in the streets of death. The creature attacks anything remotely human, and the armies attack anything else. Well... The dead man is remotely human. Throw him out. Have the creatures do it. But he's a corpse. Wiggle him then. How? Oh, I have an idea. Could you make a painting of a horse? I'll hide behind the painting. He can ride it. The creature or creatures will come and eat him. And I'll sneak back home. And I do not like this plan. But it's the best I've got. So can you do it? Can you paint me? A really real looking horse. Sure. Five hundred pounds. I don't have five hundred pounds. I'm in enough trouble buying food and supplies for you free. All right. Three hundred pounds. I don't have any money. Because your paintings aren't easy to sell from the upstairs of a sealed residential dormitory. All right. You've done a lot for us. I'll paint you one side of a horse for free. But it'll take time to dry. We don't have time and... Get down! Hide yourself! Knock the knock, Mr. Simbad! Got to stop just walking up to the window. I could have been all kinds of naked. Hey, is that a new painting back there? It's meant to be wreathed in shadows. I walk the dark streets selling stilts at night. Gotta have a sharp eye. Did you paint that since I was last here? No, I just carried it down the stairs. Whew! Whew! You're a stronger man than I am if you can get that thing on your back. Please, I know you can't afford paintings, but please spread the word. I have to sell some of these. Feels like a nice genre. It's the style out west. West? West? Now, what was I here for? Oh, it's about my brother. Uh, he's not at home. He's not at home, so uh, I reckon he might be on the rampage. Oh, sorry. Um, is... That him on the floor? Well, it was. Sorry about that. You couldn't take him away, could you? For a decent burial, of course. No can do, Simbad. Plausible deniability. Good 
You know, I, Wait, I should explain. No paper trail. Can't hear if I'm singing. La, 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 la. Well, at least he's not cross or sad. That was a close bloody call. Get upstairs and party about it then. I've got to find a way out of this. You can't be having window friends like that. They'll see too much. They'll work it out. They are not my window friend. Just a window person. Just a regular window person. They sell still. That's no excuse. This whole night is a nightmare. Wait. This whole night is a mare. Little Jeremy. I'm so sorry you have to see all this hectic anger and this squabbling and this homicide and the corpse of your former tormentor. It's too much. It's too much. And that was not just my imagination. Regular Jeremy must have an accomplice. He'll see what happens. Quickly, LJ, help me drag the body behind the landscape. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh no, you are one of them! I'm not just one of them, I happen to be the colonel of them. Are you hiding a body? Barely. What happened here? I can't afford to die just now. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Please, can I usher you out of the dormitory and away? Perhaps you think the army loses its authority when it enters a monastic dormitory? Well, you're dead wrong. Look, he came in and he was threatening to tear me apart and burn down the building. So I had to manslaughter him. Fair exchange is no robbery. And now that you know the truth, I have to kill you too. No, no you don't. Oh, thank goodness for that. How are we going to do this then? I can't afford to bribe you. At least not in money. But you're welcome to some of these oil paintings. I am no taker of bribes, but these are some enticing paintings. Are these of the West? Is this a painting of the gelato rustlers? Take it, take it all. I'm not a thief. I'm a colonel, and I'm afraid I don't have a good way out of this for you. Armed soldiers will come, foxes like me, wolves. I saw an alpaca tonight, but she died immediately. This war has become absurd. Do you want to take off your hat? To be honest, yes. Oh, the men I killed. Could he be the murderer? Let's see. No, no, that's not the murderer. What are you doing in here? I was trying to get out of the war, to hole up somewhere. Let me tell you, the war is not going well. Does that mean it's nearly finished? Nope. That's my lot out there, fighting and dying. What was that? The beast! It sounds huge. Pray you never see it. Porthoid is an accursed town. If you had any sense, you'd have fled long ago. Why didn't you? I can't have your men coming here. The window was wide open. No, no! And I opened the door from the inside. Men will come, folk, people, armed to the teeth and claws. They'll get the truth. They can't. You can't let them. It's out of my hands. I quit. I'm out of the war. First chance I get. Little Jeremy, how can I protect that rabbit your god or something? No. He's a little donkey. He's little Jeremy. He used to belong to the corps. His name was regular Jeremy. And is there a... Big Jeremy? You don't suppose? Does the beast, by any chance, have the head of a donkey? A jackalope. It has been enraged tonight. Something is up. Tearing at soldiers, guns blazing. None of it left a scratch. It's savage butcher's shops. It's like it can smell dead meat. Right. So we feed it regular Jeremy. No more body. No more problem. What's your name, you reckless fool? I'm Sinbad. Sinbad, you're a reckless fool. What are you protecting here? Why is a slathering beast half a mile long more inviting than a gang of armed furies with itchy trigger fingers? Oh, little Jeremy. I swore I would never tell anyone this. I am hiding some enemies of the people. I am concealing secret folk. I have sworn, and it matters more than my life, to protect them and not to reveal their presence. But if this place is under investigation, if the army swarm in... Are they behind that swinging bookcase? How did you know? My sister's a dom. She's got one on her dungeon. Wait, what did you say 56 words ago? Butcher shops. I have an idea. I have to rouse my secret friends. Though, to be honest, they are more just secret neighbors. You three! Dirk, Sopwith, Sandy May! What are you doing? You'll draw attention to... Who is that? I'm the Colonel. I understand you're to be shot on sight. 
Well, it's dark in here and you're standing in the shadow, so I'll wink at you. You'll do what? I'll wink at them. At her. I'll wink at her. You know, turn a blind eye. What is a Fox Army Colonel doing here? What the? What the hell? Look, I need a painting. Double quick. I need you to paint sausages. A string of sausages. Little Jeremy loves them. Big Jeremy has been stomping on butcher's shops. Paint big sausages. Big as you like. No need. Dirk's been crocheting a set of draft excluders for you. He thought they might stop things going bonk in the night so you wouldn't get so spooked. But since little Jenny mentioned sausages, he's joined them together in a string. Perfect. Dirk, the sausages. It's like he understands. Big Jeremy knows. And our cover has been B-L-O-W-N. We are in the thick grey poop, you guys. What? If you can feed the body to the beast, I'm willing to leave and say nothing more about these secret people you're hoarding here. Okay? Get ready. If your plan works, it will lurch its head into the side of the building and is likely to slay us all. You do know it spits corrosive alkaline and breathes fire. If it doesn't take the body, army check boots will come. Here are the sausages. These are lovely. Little Jeremy. A string of sausages. All the colours of the rainbow. The beast! It's coming! Deploy the sausages! Little Jeremy, summon your Merchuscule counterpart. You're going to sing the song of sausages? Deploy the sausages! Big Jeremy! Big Jeremy! You recognize little Jeremy, don't you? The whole family together. I'm sorry about regular Jeremy. You know what I said to him right before he died? Well, think fast! How did you... you knocked its brains out? How? <laughs> did you ever hear of a fellow by the name of Frankenstein? And in a single whack. Sinbad, you've done the right thing and perhaps saved all the lives in the city, at least from this big donkey. But there's still the fur wars, the smoke, the smog, the folk and the smike to contend with. Not to mention the murderer. But, I'm sorry. Every soldier in the city will be here in a matter of minutes to investigate what's happened. Your upstairs friend's cover is well and truly blown. No, no, no. And when the armies come together, there'll be a bloodbath. Evacuate them while you can. You've done a heroic deed. But it's all for nothing if I fail to protect my neighbours. Nothing is all for nothing. I used to think life was futile and full of woe. But I was wrong. Sandy May, Dirk, can you get sop with? I'm so sorry. I'm so, so deeply sorry. But you have to leave. I can't protect you when the soldiers arrive and the body scavenger. Sinbad, you absolute twat. Where are we supposed to go now? After all this time, you've ruined it. Hey, take it easy on him, Dirk. He's been doing everything he can for us, for months, for no reward. Sinbad, I know you did your best. She's right. I'm sorry, mate. You strove hard and harder. But where the bloody heck are we going to go now, though? You're right. Sinbad's such a dick. They are right. I worked so hard not to let them down, and I still failed. You are free from the responsibility now, at last. Is that supposed to be any sort of consolation? Sinbad, could I tell you a secret? Sopwith, I'm so, so sorry to displace you. Will the secret be another burden? Only a small one. Even the others don't know. I didn't want to get their hopes up. But we actually do have somewhere we can go now. What? Really? Yes. We have a friend who said they could hire us easily, but only after the giant jackalope was dead. Until today, I didn't know what giant jackalope, but I... You mean that I kept you safe until now, and now you can safely go? That's right. You've done all you could, and you've properly fulfilled your duty. I'll go and let them know. Oh, thank God. Thank God. No problem, Sinbad. Who are you? I'm God. Thanks, God. Couldn't have done it without you, Sinbad. Really good strivings, and I could tell that you cared a lot. I really did. You're a pretty good guy, Sinbad, but you're too hard on yourself. I'll see you around. Wait, God. I have a lot of questions. Great. I look forward to hearing some of your answers. Honestly, I'll catch you on the flip side, but for now, you need to flee before the armies arrive. Goodbye. Yeah, look me up. Oh, heck. Heck. Well, I'm full of months and months of pent-up energy, and I have no more obligations. I guess fighting or fleeing is one way to burn it up, and die trying. How do you feel about adventure? Adventure? It's what I crave. 
It's all I've wanted all along. Then come with me. Let's get a ship away from here and never look back. Hot diggity! And so began the voyages of Sinbad. With the giant Jeremy dead, the city's horrors were reduced by almost 20%. The dormitory was condemned, but the collection of fluffy hand puppets were donated to a secret government petting zoo where they got to play every day with the children of the powerful. Apart from little Jeremy, he went in Sinbad's heart and in his rucksack that he might ever be at hand. And that's the end of the story. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children, cow dogs, That was cow Sinbad dogs, Tries His Best by Ben Swithin, cow, cow, with Tristan cow, Lundstad as Sinbad, Agnes Henson as the Colonel, Spleeny Dodson as the Stilt Seller, Tom King as Dirk, Steve Allen as Sopwith, and little Jeremy as himself, with Natalie Ashton as the Voice of God. Cow Children Will Return in The Bachelor Affair. It's a curious thing to put a silent hand puppet into an audio drama, but little Jeremy the donkey hand puppet does actually exist. He is a real life person. So, um, here he is brushing tenderly against the microphone. It's not much, but it's real. What's that there, little Jeremy? Is it a microphone? Doesn't taste like carrots. Like a string of sausages. Good. And good night to you.